We are talking about live video strategy with Michael Hyatt and how he uses it in his content creation as well as in his marketing. This is gonna be a fantastic show. If you're new to me, welcome. I'm Laria Petrucci. I help you do more professional live videos and help you take advantage of live video in your business. Now, if you're not familiar with Michael, let me tell you about him. Michael is a best-selling author, two times in fact, for his books, Living Forward and Platform, um, both awesome books, by the way. He is the top marketing expert to follow, at least Forbes says so, and I do too, if that counts for anything. Um, he also helps you win at work and succeed at life um, using with his uh, membership uh, platform, uh, University. He also has courses, best year ever, to, five, sorry, five days to your best year ever, and also get published. Um, now, in addition to all of his accomplishments, which is vast and many, um, he is also just a fantastic, guy. He's an incredible person. He cares. That's why he has succeeded so, so much. He cares about you. He is so open and willing to help you and share his decades worth of experience. And, you know, he's been an, a, a huge inspiration to me, um, an, an amazing mentor. And uh, sorry for all the gushing, but Michael, you deserve it. Welcome. Thanks, Luria. So great to see you, man. I've been looking forward to this. I thought this would be so fun. And you can do my intros anytime you want. That was fantastic. <laughs> Some of it was even true. Some of it. <laughs> just just the last part. <laughs> you That's haven't right. been a published author. What? <laughs> yeah, what? Yeah. So uh, we're going to talk about your live streaming uh, studio. We're also going to talk about your um, strategy and dive into that, which I'm excited to hear. But first, what has live done for you? Well, you sent me that question in advance, so I had a chance to think about it. But I think live has really given me four gifts. First thing it's done is it's really given me the gift of authenticity. You know, most of the recording videos that I've done up until I started using live have been recorded, right? And so, you know, I'm on a teleprompter and we do take after take and it's all polished and all of that. And while it's professional, it's not always as authentic. And the thing that's uh, true about live is like it or not, it's raw and unfiltered. And in fact, I had somebody say to me that uh, before I started doing live, they said, I didn't realize you were as funny as you are because I don't really allow myself to do that in recorded videos, but I certainly do in, in live videos. I mean, I just do whatever comes natural. Um, I think the second gift though is relevance. You know, when you're using live video and you're trying out new things, I think it communicates to your audience that you're willing to take risks for them because you want to explore technology, you want to stay relevant, you want to be on the cutting edge, hopefully not the bleeding edge, but on the cutting edge. And I think that live has certainly done that for me. I think the third gift I've gotten is the gift of engagement. You know, I don't have the luxury when I'm doing a recorded video of getting real-time feedback, real-time interaction, uh, real-time answers to my questions and uh, the opportunity to give people answers to their questions. And so live does all of that. And the final thing that I, and I think it's probably the most important, all of those together, when you're authentic and when you're relevant and when you're engaged, it builds trust like nothing else can do. And when you build trust with your audience, that has a direct impact on your business in the form of conversions. It's a lot easier to buy from somebody you trust and people in business work overtime trying to build trust. And I don't know of a better way to do it than live. Wow. That, th those three things are absolutely spot on. And I love how succinctly you put that, <laughs> but there, I, you know, I, I think that's one of the things that I actually told you this when we started working with you on, on live and I, I said, you know, I don't, I don't know how approachable you are because you're Michael Hyatt. And as Andy pointed out, if you don't know who Michael Hyatt is, you don't have the internet. <laughs> Everybody knows you. But that is, you know, the, for someone like you, for sure, you know, that is something that has really benefited you, I think, in terms of your audience um, and getting to know you as a person, not just this person that they admire. Yeah, I think 
I think that's true. I mean, I think that the more you can let people in and kind of see who you really are, warts and all, you know, I goof up, I make mistakes. You know, the first live weekly show that I did, uh, my very first one out of the can was an epic fail, all because I didn't check my guest's upload speed. And it was it was still great. I mean, people love it when people like me fail at technology because then all of a sudden they don't feel so bad about their inability to always make technology work. So I think there's there's huge value in that. And the good thing about live is you don't really have to plan ahead to try to, you know, fake a crash and burn. It's just going to happen. I mean, it's just the nature of technology. You know, I'm not in my level four studio right now broadcasting because evidently over the weekend, I flipped a switch and screwed it up. And so, you know, that's just reality. You know, we worked on it, as you know, uh, up until you went live. But it doesn't always it doesn't always work. Most of the time it does. Ninety percent of the time it does. But it kind of keeps you on the edge and keeps you sharp because it's not 100 percent. Absolutely. And you you handle it really, really well when it doesn't go well. Um, and that's just one of the things that you do have to learn about with live. What are is that like the main thing that you've learned using live video or you, you actually are you mentioned your studio. So you're using a level four live streaming studio. And if you if you're new around here and you haven't uh, familiarized yourself with the four levels, you can go to livestreamingpros.com slash four levels. Um, but he's in a professional TV quality studio. And, um, you know, has that been really beneficial to you? Have you seen any audience, uh, you know, backlash from going professional or how has that worked out? Yeah, well, I guess there's, there's several things to it. I, I think the, the the real benefit of having a level four studio for me, and this was the primary driver when I got connected with you guys, was it's just less fuss. You know, when I was going live before, you know, I, I mean, you know, obviously anybody can go live at level one and just, you know, use your telephone and talk into it. But after a while, you started thinking, you know, this would look a little better if I had some lighting. And so I got to the place where I was doing, in your language, the level two and then level three. And so I was adding these things on, but I found that I wasn't doing live as much as I wanted to because it was just too much hassle to get the lights set up and, you know, to adjust everything and get my tripods out. And, you know, it was a 30 to 45 minute ordeal every time I wanted to go live. And so I ended up procrastinating. But now the cool thing is most days, not today, but most days I can walk into the level four studio, flip a couple of switches and bam, you know, I'm on. So that's a huge uh, benefit. I think if I can keep going here, there one other yeah. one of the things that's been a huge benefit is I didn't realize how much I was going to use the studio. I thought I was just creating it for live video, and that that's a whole other thing we can talk about if you want. But the whole purpose of that was to be able to recreate my podcast. We can talk more in a minute if you want about that. But I thought, well, I'll just use it for live, and that'll be it. Because typically, when I'm doing video. I have a production crew out here to the house or in some location, and we've got five or six people, uh, including people from our staff, people from out of town, and we're shooting video with three cameras, all the setup, all that kind of stuff. What I found, though, is that the studio has replaced some of that, not all of it. I don't think I ever want to replace all of it, but like, for example, I'm doing now all these promo videos that my team gives me to do, like we're in the middle of a launch, and they say, hey, we want you to do this video that's going to be an upsell from the shopping cart to this or that. I mean, there's a thousand and one things or why people should attend the webinar live. They want me to do that. Well, I can do that in the studio all by myself. I don't even need a producer to be able to do that. I can push the switch and just start. But we're doing even more sophisticated things. Like, um, as you may recall, I was supposed to speak at Social Media Marketing World. In fact, we were supposed to do an interview there. Yeah. But when I got there, this is like the first time this has ever happened in my career, um, I got sick. In fact, Gail, my wife and I both got sick and flew home to Nashville the next day and we were like laid up for a week. But um, what I did was in order to kind of make it up to Social Media Marketing World, I recorded my speech with my slides in the studio. And it was so cool. And I, so I heard back from Social Media Marketing World and they said, that was so over the top because I, I did this picture in a picture kind of thing where I had the slides and then I was talking and I had my producer Matt there and he was switching back and forth and it was simple, but it was way more engaging than just watching a string of, you know, one slide after another 
like most of us do, webinars. So I'm continually to find uh, new uses for the studio. That's awesome. I call that pro level webinars so that you, like you said, it's really engaging because people can actually see you. Yep. And as we all know, when people can actually see you, they place more emphasis on what you're saying. They really get to know you as a person. Uh, the eyes are the window to the soul. Isn't that the phrase? <laughs> they, yeah, they, I think they, so. You build that no like and trust or no love and trust, as Chris Ducker says, um, even more. So that, that's wonderful. Now, you, you mentioned that, you know, you're using all of this stuff. Um, I want to dive into the strategy that you've put into place. Now, uh, you know, hmm. let's let's talk about how live fits into your launches. You mentioned that you're in the middle of a launch and how it fits into your marketing purposes. Yeah, so let me kind of give you the framework, <clears throat> excuse me, for what we typically do, and then I'll show you how we've augmented that with live. So we're about to open registration. We only do this a couple times a year, actually about once a year now for Platform University, and that's going to open. I think it's on, yeah, I'm still looking here on my calendar, the 12th of June. So we're kind of doing in the ramp-up phase to the launch. And typically what we would do in the past, which we'll still do this time, is we have some kind of opt-in magnet to get people into the top of the sales funnel so that we can begin the process of explaining Platform University to them, educating them on it, so that when we open registration on the 12th, they're gonna be you know, ready, willing, and able to sign up. So we have about 5,000 members in that site. We'll probably add about another 3,000 during this launch, which is um, pretty typical uh, given the size of the mailing list today and so forth. So we do an opt-in magnet, and usually that's a, in the form of an assessment. So we've become real students and friends with Ryan Levesque, who wrote the book, Ask. And Ryan is all about audience segmentation. So we were using assessments before that, and he said, you know, if you just tweak this a little bit, you could put people into buckets, which sounds incredibly impersonal and maybe even inhumane, but we don't, we don't put them in buckets literally, but we segment them based on their level. So when it comes to Platform University, are they total beginners? I mean, much like you guys do with your four levels of uh, live streaming, mm -hmm. but are they beginners? Are they a little bit more advanced? Are they pros? What are they? Because we want to talk to them uh, in a different way based on the level they're at. We don't want the people that are afraid of technology for their eyes to glaze over and for them to get scared when we start talking about technology. At the same time, we don't want the real pros. We don't want their eyes to roll when we're talking about the real beginner stuff. Like so I know that already. Them. Yeah, exactly. So we so we do this assessment, which essentially gives them a score. So it's a self-assessment. People love this kind of stuff anyway. And we use a lot of them. We use one for best year ever called the life score assessment. We use one for uh, my free to focus productivity course called the personal productivity assessment, but it puts them into buckets. So that's one thing. So another thing we do for opt-ins is we really use webinars. And, you know, I've, I, I know Amy Porterfield is, is one of your clients and she and I are really, really close friends and she's taught me everything I know about webinars, but those are a huge opt-in magnet for us and they're a huge conversion tool. Um, we used to use a lot of Jeff Walker style series of videos and I think those can still be valuable, but we've kind of moved a little bit away from that and are doing more of the webinars today. And then, of course, we get people into um, an email kind of campaign where just over the course of about 10 days, we're going to be emailing them various things about Platform University. Again, the whole purpose is designed to get them uh, to become paying members of that membership site. This time, though, we're going to be adding video to the mix. And we've always, in fairness, we've always done some live video in the past, but it's been pretty rudimentary. You know, we've just done maybe a Q&A on the last day of registration. Yeah. But for this registration, which is going to be open for five days, each day is going to have its own strategy. Okay. So we're going to be doing live video every single day. Each with a different topic or what do you mean strategy? Yeah. So, for example, on the opening day registration, um, we're going to be talking about a special opening day bonus that if you join Platform University on open opening day, we've got a really cool bonus that I'll reveal then. And we'll be talking <laughs> about the fact that registration is open because 
you know, people wait for months and months. They sign up for our waiting list. They're waiting for months to get into Platform uh, University. And so we make it a big deal, you know, that it's open. And then the second day, I'm going to be going over this uh, Platform GPS assessment, talking about the assessment. I'll be showing uh, some screenshots or be scrolling through the assessment and showing people what they get if they take it. Then I think on day three, we've got a personal tour that I'm going to be giving of our brand new Platform University site. We've completely redesigned it from the ground up. All new software, a new WordPress theme. It's very cool. And it's come from over four years of user input. And I'm going to demo that for people so that they can kind of, you know, do a, get a behind the scenes look at it or how it would look if they were actually a member. Right. Then I think and by the way, four, before you keep going, the, the redesign, yeah. everything that you've done there is fantastic. Um, it really helps you. organize the content and really helps people understand where to go next. And you've really thought about the, the mm. your members and how they need to, to use the content that you provide. So wonderful job there. Good. Go Thanks so much. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So on day four, and this is the first time we've ever done this. Uh, we normally do webinars, as I said, and we do those every day during the open registration. And those are live webinars. So I'm doing it every single day using the Zoom platform. We used to use GoToWebinar, but we actually like Zoom better today. But we go through a process where we promote the webinar, people register for it, and then they get the email with the link, and then they join the webinar on the day of the webinar. And that's worked great for us. But we think there's a huge opportunity to actually do the webinar live on Facebook. So on day four, that's what we're going to do. And uh, the cool thing about that is you're going to see me on the screen for good or for bad the entire time. <laughs> and the slides will come up as they're appropriate. But I just think, you know, kind of to the point you were making, if people can see me and they're engaged with me, they know it's live because there I am. They can see my facial expressions and everything else. So we'll see, but I think it's going to have an impact on, on conversions. And then finally, and I'll go quickly, but day five is going to be just a, a general Q&A. If you've got any questions that are keeping you from joining Platform University, then um, we'll answer those questions. John Meese, our dean of Platform University, and I will be on together to answer questions. Now, uh, so much here to, to dive into. So um, I'm going to take it one step at a time. So the I want you guys watching this to hear what he's doing with that five-day plan. So he's going to go live publicly for five days and has different things each day that you can join and get additional value from. Now, what he's doing is going behind the scenes a lot, you know, and showing you exactly what they're, they've are they been working on. Behind the scenes is extremely valuable. He's also doing Q&A. He's educating. So you're, you're tackling a lot of different live strategies right there in that five-day overall strategy. Um, now, when you say, day, so day four is your webinar, and from somebody whose business relies heavily on webinars and typically in the past of marketing with webinars you actually you want that registration you want that you want to be able to control that a lot more so talk to me about your thought process between you know opening that up on facebook versus um having that super control that you have to make everybody register and, and that 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 typical process yeah. So the reason we make people register, honestly, is because we want to get them into the email funnel mm -hmm. so that we right. can begin a campaign to them over time. Because, you know, a lot of people are not going to buy on the first contact. It's going to take the building of a relationship over time before they're willing to buy, even if it's over a few days. So we want to get their name into the system. Give you an example. Last year, we had 187,000, more than 187,000 people register for our webinars. So that and by the way, those were unique registrations that weren't already in our database. So that's how many names we added to our uh, database last year, just through webinars. So it's a very effective strategy in collecting names. Plus, um, typically on the webinar, we're directing people to we get a we give them a bonus for just showing up. Uh, we give them a bonus for staying on till the end of the webinar, and we give them a bonus for taking fast action and registering for whatever the product. Uh, it is plus, and I don't know if you've 
been on one of my webinars before, Luria. Yeah. But we also have a pretty comprehensive workbook, you know, that's beautifully yes. designed. It's, it's designed to have help them take notes. So our thinking is that anybody will be able to jump onto the Facebook webinar because it'll be live at facebook.com slash Michael Hyatt. So there's no way to register people to get on. So there'll be, we expect we'll have a lot of reach, but how do we get them into the sales funnel? Well, that's where we're going to have to count on people registering in order to get the downloadable workbook and to get the bonuses. And frankly, if they're not willing to do that, my theory, we'll test this in real life, but my fear, theory is that those are probably not people that are going to buy anyway. If they can't click for the free stuff, they're probably not going to click through to buy something. I don't know. We'll see. That's but I do. A, I have some concerns about point. it and some excitement. And your concerns being just well, that, that my process concern, of opening it up? Yeah. And, and of course, we're doing it the last day. So I don't, I'm, I'm still going to use, I'm still going to rely on Zoom so that we get the majority of the uh, the webinar attendees through that. But here's, here's my, here, the opportunity is that because it's not gated in any way and because the replays there, we could have huge reach. Mm -hmm. The concern I have is not, is obviously getting them into the funnel, but even more importantly, I think that people tend to be more distracted on Facebook and it might be more difficult for them to stick with the webinar like they would when they go to a, you know, a distinct platform and they register for it. We'll see. Right. I don't know. Probably depends on how engaging I am. <laughs> well, that's, a, that's, that's probably very, very true. You know, then that's one of the benefits of, of live is it really makes you excel at that kind of stuff. And you can have with yep. the pro level webinars that you're going to be doing, you can have those call to actions on the screen. And, and so there's going to be a lot that you can do there. And Elisa is mentioning, you know, she hates to, have to always be putting in her email address for certain things. And so she's more likely to watch on a social platform like Facebook. So, um, yeah, definite pros and cons for sure. And I, I, um, love that you're so willing to try new things and that you're willing to push the, uh, the limits there with your, uh, with your experimentations. Um, so let's talk about content uh, strategy as well. So you have a weekly show uh, where you go live every Monday at 7 p.m. Central and you have an interview somewhat similar to this, right? So an interview show right. where you in, in invite guests on and, and you provide massive amounts of value there. Um, how does your, your weekly show fit into your overall content strategy and how will you use all of that in your marketing if you will at all? Okay, so here is the deal. My podcast is the single biggest lead generation vehicle that we have in our company. Uh, it creates more engagement, you know, cause I've got 30 minutes where people have me plugged into their ears and they're listening intently. I got really bored with my podcast last fall. And so we put it on ice in order to reinvent it. So I haven't had any new podcast since last November. So we began to get this idea. We hired a producer from NPR. We got this idea of an interview show, but kind of like if you're familiar with Terry Gross or um, some of those on NPR where you've mm -hmm. got somebody asking questions, but there's also some narration that's going on in between the bits from the guest. So my guys and my company said, so great, we're going to get the interviews. So we just record those naturally. I mean, we'll use Skype or we'll use Zoom or whatever. I said, no. I, how about if we create a weekly show and then we repurpose that content for the podcast? So the weekly show beca became a bigger deal than we anticipated, uh, but it was designed to get the raw material for the podcast. And so now I think we're all really pumped about the potential of the weekly show, but it's still going to become the podcast. And my guess is there'll be some overlap, but not probably a lot of overlap, but that launches on uh, the first week in June, the first Wednesday in June. I think that's the seventh. Okay. And so you're going to, you're basically saying that you're going to take the live show that you're doing and use that as, as content for the podcast. So that's really yep. one of the things that we teach at livestreamingpros.com slash strategy is the after live of your live video, the repurposing of it and 
that's what you're doing right there. So um, you're, you're doing that and then you also have email lists where you send content out via that. So are you using your live show in your emails? Yeah, this is kind of cool. We're not, we're not actually promoting the live show via uh, email yet. I think part of it is we're trying to see how that's going to interface with the podcast because I think that's where we'll do the big email push. But here's a cool thing. Every one of those weekly uh, shows is becoming a blog post, and that blog post is going out to my uh, readers. So we're sending out about a half a million email pieces on that show, but after the fact, but in a written form. And then when we do the podcast, it'll end up being the same thing. So basically here you've got people having the ability to consume the content in various ways. And, and as we all know, people consume content better in different ways yes. just based on how they consume and uh, learn best. And so you're, you're offering them every possible scenario, it sounds like, to learn that same content. Well, we are. And, and even from the live video, our social media managers going into that and finding the quotable snippets that we can use for quote posts on the blog or in social media, whether it's Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or whatever. So everything in our world is content and we generate a ton of content uh, out of our office. So this has become where I'm spending most of my focus is on the live show because again, that becomes the raw material that feeds so much other stuff. Now you have a team, as you mentioned, who's, who's kind of helping you with this. And, and this is a right. big thing to accomplish. So is there one piece of that pie that you would focus on if you were only going to do one? Yes. I, I always say, and I said this with blogging, I'll say it with podcasts, and I think it's true with live streaming. Uh, consistency is more important than frequency. So I think a lot of people get excited about uh, live streaming or podcasting or blogging, and they think, oh my gosh, I'm going to do this every day. And about 18 months ago, I did an experiment on Periscope where I went live every day for 30 days. And I told people, this is an experiment. After 30 days, we're going to evaluate it, and we're going to see whether I'm going to continue to do it or not. And for us, and it's not, it's not going to be true for everybody. Your mileage may vary. For us, it was too much. So what happened was is that we felt like we were getting people full on the hors d'oeuvres so that when we came around and asked for their order for the entree, they were already full. Or to put it in content terms, we were giving them so much free content that when it came time to ask them to sign up for a course or join a membership site, they were like, well, I can't even consume all the free stuff you're doing. Why would I join something else that I'd actually have to pay for? So we decided that we were going to dial that back and be a little bit more uh, strategic about it. And one of the things I didn't mention, Loria, how we're using live is inside of our private Facebook groups. So for example, I do a live monthly coaching session inside of our best year ever private Facebook group. And that's been huge. But from my perspective, I want to give the most access to people that are paying for it. Um, definitely some access free. I do a ton of stuff free, as you know, but I want to be very careful and thoughtful about that and not overwhelm people because, you know, people have lives and stuff. <laughs> they do. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. There's, there's so much that we could go into and I want to keep diving in, but unfortunately we don't have that much time. Um, but this is like, this, if you guys pay attention to everything that he just said, there's so much that you can take away from it. So start with one piece and add to it. Um, you know, if you don't have a team in place, then you can't accomplish it all and don't get overwhelmed doing so like he, he mentioned, but um, just at least take one piece and keep adding to that, a layer on that complexity. So Michael, you mentioned you have the weekly show, of course. You can find that at, at facebook.com slash Michael Hyatt, but you're also multicasting and you're sending it everywhere, right? Right. So it's going to YouTube and Periscope also. Fantastic. And the, the Platform University um, launch is coming up. The, I am part of this and it is not the launch, <laughs> Platform University. And it is an incredible resource. Uh, so where can people find out more about that? Yeah, you can just go to platformuniversity.com. And right now, 
uh, you'll have a join the waiting list page. And you want to do that because, again, we open registration once a year. And if you sign up for the waiting list, then you'll be notified when we open registration later this next month. Can't believe it's the end of May already. <laughs> but uh, June 12th is when we're opening registration. But if you sign up for the waiting list, you don't have to worry about that. We'll notify you when it's time. And there's a lot of cool stuff that's going to happen as we ramp up to that. And guys, I see a lot of questions coming through and I'm sorry that we didn't get a chance to get to them, but we will dive more into strategy here on this channel further and deeper. So pay attention for, for all of that. Um, now, uh, I just want to really quickly say another thing that has really influenced me, and that's your journal that's that's being launched soon. Uh, you did a pre-launch for that. The journal itself, I'll let you tell people about that real quick. And that has been a massive benefit to me, the way you present everything and the way you help guide through even mm. a day's work has helped tremendously. So thank you for that. Fantastic. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, so we decided, I don't know, about six months ago that we wanted to launch a physical product. And, you know, I come from the traditional world of book publishing where I was a publisher for over 30 years. Two of my main guys, two of my executives in my company also came from that world. So we just love physical books. Today, I actually got the first prototype <gasps> from the printer. Nice. And this is pretty cool. So this is, yeah, it's all the pages and everything. And... Um, so we're in the process of getting the book printed, but this is designed really to do two things. It's designed to take what I teach in five days to your best year ever with regard to goal setting and goal achievement and integrate that into a daily planner and then take what I teach in my free to focus productivity course and integrate that into the daily planner. You get one of these books per quarter and right now you can't buy it. We, we sold twice as many as we anticipated when we did the launch, we've got about 20,000 people who have subscribed to it. And it's a script subscription model where you get this uh, new planner sent to you once a quarter. Uh, somebody said, well, why don't you just send all four of them at once? Because we want this to be an experience and an event, really something I call in free to focus an activation trigger so that when you get it, it gets you re-engaged in being intentional about your life and beginning to plan your days because that's how you can be more productive that's how you can accomplish your dreams and what matters most to you. So we'll be uh, selling it and we'll be opening that for sale as soon as we get our stock in uh, about the, the middle or the, the second week in July. Fantastic. And yes, Sarah, planner, not journal. My apologies for that. And go find the okay. PDF. <laughs> she, she's waiting on hers. Okay. So Michael, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, you guys go check him out at michaelhyatt.com and uh, look, look forward as he's using live video and his strategy. Pay attention to what he's doing. Thank you, Michael. Thanks, Luria. Great to be with you. And you guys, we are here every Tuesday and Thursday at 10 a.m. Pacific. So I do hope you'll join me every single week. And if you want to learn more about live streaming and you want to actually put this to use for your own self, I encourage you to join our five-day challenge at livestreamingchallenge.com. Uh, go in, take the quiz. It'll tell you exactly where to start and you'll get your challenge and you will start using live stream more effectively. Have a wonderful day. I'll see you back here Tuesdays and Thursdays. Bye-bye.